everyone, and welcome back to the Unbothered Podcast, where we like to chat about the challenge. And we are here today doing an interview with somebody that we have had the pleasure of chatting with off and on through the years in our fan group. And he has made his return to the challenge on All Stars 4 and has gotten what we think is his redemption season. The one and only Mr. Jay Mitchell. Welcome, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like that's a good intro. I can stay for this Thank one. Thank <laughs> you. I try to be everybody's like hype man, you know? Give yeah, a I good appreciate intro. That. Yeah, I you're welcome. <laughs> oh, it was you definitely don't a redemption it. season for you. Yes. So. Oh, that was that was the main goal. So I'm happy yeah. that yeah. you guys think so. He I think everybody's it. loving you right now, which is a good thing. So uh, you're, no longer, you're not going to be the guy who can finish the drink anymore. I know, which is amazing because that's how they introed me on this season. <laughs> you know what, though? I wouldn't have done it either. I can't eat gross stuff, so I'm with you. I have your back on that. I don't even have an answer for it, to be honest. I don't know. Like, There's so much that you guys didn't see about... Because I, I tell people that I'm friends with, like, yeah, I drank seven of those pint glasses. That's how many you had to drink. You had to drink seven. I drank seven. The problem was you had to finish the entire pint glass before moving to the next one. So I would drink half, throw up, and they'd be like, we have to refill your glass. And they'd refill it to the top. Then Jenna would drink half. Jenna would drink half, throw up. They'd be like, we have to refill it. After seven halves, they were just like, even they were just like, God, Jay, like, please. And I'm like, what do you want me to do? I can't help myself from throwing up. You know what I mean? And then every time we threw up, they were like, Jay, I'm so sorry, but I got to fill it again. So I never, it looks like I never got past one. Looks like we quit. But really, we drank about seven of those and we got timed out. But, you know, you never see any of that stuff. Ugh, that sucks. And that's crazy because nowadays, like when they do the eating challenges, like people are vomiting all over the place. I know, and just... I know. And I, on a recent season, Wes and his partner, they were like, oh, if you drink this, you get an advantage. And he was like, no, nah, we're good. We'll, like, Don't worry about it. And I'm like, so yeah. no one gives them any, like, no one gives them any shit for anything. You know what I mean? Like, on on All Stars, Cam quit in the middle of a challenge. Like, no one's gonna give her crap for that. Like, it is what it is. Every a hundred people have done it since me, but you know, I was one of the first, right. so that's why it stuck. Well, I feel like they want Aww. to show people growing up, and it grosses me out. Like, I have to fast forward. I can't, I can't hear it or watch it. It's so disgusting. So I just fast forward through all that anyway. Yeah, those parts aren't fun. They definitely yeah. aren't fun. And one of the yeah. one of the biggest things too is I I believe some people are still gonna say, like, well, you never drank the drink. Like you made it through this whole season, you did great, but you still never were up against the one thing that we, you know, you couldn't do. So I technically didn't get to redeem myself in that manner. But I hope that everyone can see everything else I did this whole season and sure. agree that my redemption is complete, you know. Oh, yeah. If absolutely. it makes you feel any better us the fan community we give fessy shit every single time there's an eating challenge because that man can't even try right but i'm the one who is labeled as the guy who can't drink the drink the quitter can't finish the drink (laughs) Uh, not anymore not anymore not anymore everybody has your back now yeah we got your back now oh we've had your back for a while you guys have and that's why i told you i will happily come on here and, and talk with you guys i don't do podcasts very often i don't really have the time um i've been asked to fly out for a few and all and it's like i i don't have the time like it's just i I just don't even now i'm trying to squeeze this in 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 between so many things but you guys have been nothing but nice and respectful and appreciative so i try to return the favor to those that i can thank you that is so great but i have i have to ask you (laughs) would you go on that podcast i knew it and i knew it was coming as soon as i started to mention it i'm I'm like damn one of them's gonna ask about it (laughs) um because i've got i've gotten tagged and like i don't go on social media very often especially instagram like i go on because they send us an email and they're like hey post this and i'm like okay so i post it right. like, i'm not a person that sits there scrolling all day long and stuff but i've noticed that I, i've gotten tagged in a, in a few different things i haven't seen them all but i know one of them was saying that i was ghosting zach on his podcast and i'm like i don't know i didn't know you reached out to me uh i might have missed it um but I don't know. Um, would I go on it? Probably not. Um, I can't fly out to, I think there, I think he lives in Michigan, right? I think him and Jenna yeah. are in Michigan. I, there's no way I have the time to fly out to Michigan to do that. Um, and I would hate to half-ass it and do it 
he like his is always in person. Like that's the thing. They have the studio right. set up and everything like yeah. that. So right. when I say I would hate to half ass it and do it over like Zoom with him, it I mean that in no disrespect to anyone else or you guys, like how we do it over Zoom. This is how yeah. you guys do it. He just has a whole studio set up, so I'd rather not do it over the phone when that's his setup. But then again, it's like the guy ran his mouth about me for years. I have no hate towards Jenna. I have no hate towards him, but I'm also not really eager to go out of my way to help somebody who's been talking smack about me for years. And then his partner that's there, um, someone sent me a clip of him. Like, they're like, oh, no, look, Zach likes you. He said, you know, that you're really good and you were an athlete and all this. And then it's like, it's him, Zach saying that. And then his partner being like, well, let's be honest, like, he sucks. And, Zach, and I'm like, oh, oh, that's great. Yeah, I definitely want to go on now. Then the next comment... Zach's like, yo, he's killing it. And someone else was like, well, let's just say his, his same guy with the curly hair. He's like, let's just say he's surviving. And I'm like, wow, I've come in first, second, or third place in nine challenges. And somehow I'm just surviving. So, yeah. all right. Like, again, yeah. I'm going to like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to fly out there and, and go do that for you to say that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't need that. Then they interviewed some other guy, Wood, Wood, Woodard, Woody, Wood, I don't know what his name is. And he sat there just. <laughs> The whole interview was just him ragging on me. And I'm like, I can't wait to go do your interview, guys. It's so much fun. Like, and, and again, it's like, Zach um, never, as far as I know, Zach hasn't reached out to me. Yeah. Um, I, You know what? I wonder if it's in like, or the, like the spam thing or something like that. Because I don't it follow any of them. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, actually, I'll look and see if he did reach out. But as far as I know, he didn't. So I'm not ghosting him. But if he did, I'll yeah. respectfully talk to him and say, like, you know, probably not the best thing. Yeah. And then he can just want to mean... change it and talk, and talk smack about me for not wanting to come on. It's perfect. It's a never-ending cycle. <laughs> for his co-host to, to shit talk, like, bro, what? I would that's, love that's to see what I'm you saying. go that's, on. Right. All I've, all I've seen was three different clips of that guy saying that I'm just barely surviving. The what, What's his? Wood, Woody? Woody? His name Woody? Well, the, know, his main know. co-host's name is Pierre. I don't know who the other guy is. I think no, he's yeah, Pierre is the one who was like, oh, he's surviving. I mean, we know he's not yeah. going to make a final. And then the guy he interviewed one day was something to do with casting. Oh, with yeah. Someone was just sitting there saying, let's be honest, like, the kid sucks. He's never going to make a final, like, all this nonsense. So it's like, you know what? You guys do your thing. I'll do my thing. We'll both be happy. No I think you would have 100% made the final if it didn't For require, sure. like, the star whatever to get to the final i think you 100 percent would have made it because you never lost absolutely right? i and it's funny because i made i made some like you heard me make like a, a closet side deal with jasmine for a little while like i had a, a little deal with brad as well even leroy i had a deal with leroy you know i never needed to cash in on any of them i've saved all of them i saved you watched me literally save brad at one point mm -hmm. the only reason he going was because of my vote I saved Leroy numerous times. And then it's like, I never came in the bottom ever to even give anyone an opportunity to screw me over. So it's like, at the end of it, I was like, I'm not going in and making any deals next time. I'm going to go in and just do me because that's what I did. And it right. worked. It worked. I never came in the bottom. And I agree. It was the star. I said this, I just watched the uh, episode finally, like two days ago. And I said it. I would have never wanted to go in in that tank, like colorblind and a broken nose. Like it was the two worst possible. Oh my God, it's the two worst possible scenarios for me combined. So I knew it was broke go your well. nose. Yeah, my nose broken. Yes. So I say they they show me saying it in the episode, and I'm like, I'm just inhaling water the whole time. I had to hold my oh, nose, God. but now I had one hand to go under. That's why Car is saying like use the ladder to go down, like because I only have one hand. So because right. I have yeah. to hold my nose with the other hand because the water was just shooting straight up. So there's nothing I could do. You know I what I mean? And if so... I didn't need to go in, if I didn't need to force myself to go in, a hundred percent I'm walking into that final. There was no question. I never right. put myself yeah. in the bottom to allow someone to send me home. I felt so bad for you because that whole thing it just you know, water and colorblind. My husband's colorblind and there's no way he could have done it. So yeah, you, you can hear Nicole. It, it was funny watching it because you just hear them keep cutting to Nicole and she's like, it's orange, it's red. No, Jay, that one's green. No, Joe, yellow, that one's yellow. And I'm like, that's how that whole entire elimination went. I was holding them up at one point and she was like, your left hand's red. And I'm like, thank you. 
And then I would try that <laughs> one and then I hold them up again. And she's That's like, a good friend. Like, All right. Like it was just, it was that brutal. It was that brutal for me. And the fact that I still barely lost. Yeah. Was, right. Like, I, was, right. I was happy with my performance because I knew there was no way I was going to win. But I was just praying to God that by some miracle I did. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But you, you were a man of your word. You said, I'm going to go in and you did it. Unlike some other people. Yeah. Oh, yeah, guys. That's why I told Nicole, don't put all your eggs in the laurel basket because we know it ain't going to go well. <laughs> And sure, sure enough, just like I swear, as soon as it, you see me look right in the call, and I'm like, told you, I called this from the moment it started. I called that. But I had, you got to understand, this is, and I think this is something that people have thrown around, and I heard um, a lot of people talk about it, but no one knows the actual answer. To us, we were done at Trivia Challenge. Like, we thought that tr- when we showed up to that Trivia Challenge, we didn't know it was trivia, right? You don't know that there's another challenge. So we showed up to trivia challenge and I was like, like, this is probably my last chance to go in. This is, we all agreed, this is our last challenge. So I'm like, it's gotta be a guy's day. I'm throwing this. Like I have to throw it or win. That's the only way to go in. And then they started asking me questions and I started getting them right. And I'm like, you know what? It's too late now. I can't throw it. Now I have to win. Unfortunately, I didn't. I thought I was done. I thought my opportunity was over. We all agreed, everyone in that house agreed that when we showed up for the next challenge, it wasn't going to be a challenge. We were going to show up and TJ was going to say, those of you who have a star, you can run my final. Those of you who don't have a star, you cannot run my final. Like, wow, it just got really dark in here. <laughs> that's a, that's how we thought We're that friends. that was going to go. Can you guys still see me fine? Is that okay? Yeah, you're good. Yeah, we can still see you. That's how we thought it was going to go. Like, we literally thought we were going to show up and it was a purge. That was it. We were getting sent home. If you didn't have a star, you were done. So when we showed up and it was another challenge, we're like, oh my God, like we have another opportunity. Wow. And then someone didn't go in. And I'm like, how do you not go in? That was your last chance. You're going home now. You have zero chance of winning $250,000. Like how can you, how can you voluntarily say, no, I don't want to win $250,000. Cause that's what they did. You know? And then we went home and we're like, wow, I can't believe that was another challenge. Then we went back and we're like, well, today's the purge then. And it was another challenge. So we we were like, at some point, this is over. So when I got that opportunity, to me, there's no way there's another challenge. We've already gone three past what we thought we were supposed to. So this is it. This is it. Now, don't forget, I have to win in order to even be able to go in. So it was two-part plan. And the fact that I won... I was like, I have to do this. There's no way I don't do this. I could never forgive myself if I had the opportunity to go in, passed up on it, and then the next one we show up and they're like, that's it. If you don't have it, you're, you're done. I would never be able to forgive myself because yeah. I would come there to make the daily pay, the weekly paycheck, like other people are saying. I went there to win $250,000. Mm-hmm. I wanted to redeem myself and I wanted to take home the W. That was it. I didn't care about anything else. I don't need the, I'd rather the 250 or the chance to win 250 than stay for one more day and make an extra $2,000 or whatever the pay may be. So I would have never, I would have never been able to live with myself if I said, no, I'm good. I'm going to let them duke it out. And then tomorrow they're like, all right, if you don't have a star, you go home. I, right. I would have, it would have been the worst, the worst for me. Cause I thought I was, I'll be honest, I thought I was winning this whole damn thing. I didn't think there was anybody that was stopping me. I mean, I mean, a couple of women probably would have given you a run for your money, but I think for the guys, yeah, you're definitely were at the top when it came to who could have been a real problem in that final. Yeah, yeah, exactly. and I appreciate that. But like, even I ran with Kara, and when we did the bobsled challenge, I was like, "Well, mm-hmm. she's like, well, you go first, just run up that hill." And I'm like, "Yeah, but what if you're faster?" She's like, "Check, you're you're gonna beat, just go." So I was like, "Okay," and I did. I beat everyone. Then we had to do the the one in the stadium. I was behind Derek the entire time running and everyone kept saying, well, like some of my friends, like you're the fastest guy in like in the firehouse. You let him beat you. And I'm like, no, I followed him. Why am I going to blow past him? There's, there's eight chairs available. Who cares right. about number one, number two, number three, or number four, I'm still getting a chair. So I yep. just followed, him. let him do the hard work. I stay right on his ass and it worked out perfectly. You it were did. smarter, not harder. That's, that's what you that's, did in the in the lasso thing too. So 
Oh, that was great. Yeah, I love that they showed that. <laughs> I, I literally love that they showed that because people were like, wait, you really sat there and said that like to yourself? And I was like, yeah, I thought about it. I'm like, I'm last on for 10 minutes and I can't get it. So I'm like, wait a second. They said we can use that to assist ourselves to get to the end. So can I just push off? Like, they'll yell at me if I can't, right? So you had to last the first one no matter what. Because you there's nothing mm. to push off of. There's no way right. to go. That's right. where I got the first one. I was just like, whoosh. And I'm looking around. Heard, and I made it. And I'm like, holy shit. And then no <laughs> one said anything. And I'm like, okay. So I did it again. And it wasn't easy. It, it was a long distance to push yourself. So I had to, like, go back and forth and use every ounce of, like, strength that I had. And I would just barely make it. And then I just coasted. I flew, blew everybody out of the water after that. There was no question, no debate, no nothing. Well, so that makes sense then, because we were talking about it last time that nobody else like followed your lead and did that. So if they knew it was hard for you to get, you know, push yourself that far, I guess they thought they couldn't make it that far. So. Yeah, it was. It took yeah. a lot. It took a lot, and it was like you were on a hill. The shopping cart, like it, it like jerks back and forth as you're going. It was. On, on like one or two of them I didn't make it and I like was right there and I had to like do one of these like and like get myself enough just to like get a fingertip on and I'm holding out one fingertip and I'm like come on <laughs> like pull myself up so I, it would have definitely been hard for anybody to do it yeah so, yeah well, that makes sense yeah yeah like we said you worked smarter not harder and you know it, it's not your fault that there's a loophole in the rules yeah, exactly. It, it, the, the very first challenge we had, Cara said like, oh, I would do the star, run to the next one, look at it, measure it with my hand and then run back. And I'm like, son of a, I never thought of that. So it was like, <laughs> if I would have seen her and knew she was doing it, it's like, boom, I would have done it too. But on this one, I happened to be the one that figured out like that thought, oh, let me try this. And it worked. So I was very, very grateful for that. I needed to win. Yeah. That was do or die for me. Yeah. Yes. And thankfully you have the upper body strength uh, to make it work. Now I do have a question. Mm -hmm. You and Nicole are obviously friends, like in real life. How did you guys meet? Cause I know um, she did, I think the real world season after yours. Yes, I did real world explosion. She did real world skeletons, which was the mm -hmm. one immediately after mine. Yes. Um, that's how I met her. I met her through real world because she lives in Staten Island. I'm in the Bronx. And we just started doing events together. Once I was oh, doing okay. events, I was just doing events. And then when she got off the season, she was like, well, I need to get out there too. So like, I'll tag along on your event. And I was like, all right, cool. And then people, then companies were like, well, we have both of you. Can both of you show up and we'll pay, like, we'll do whatever. And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So we started kind of tag team and events and stuff like that. Got very close with each other. We became very good friends. Then she got into the fire Academy and then I got into the fire Academy. So then we got on the same job together. So then it was like we run into each other every once in a while. And then like we would hang out outside. I, I know I'm very close with her family. She's very close with my family, which makes all, all of this season and nonsense so much more difficult now. So, yes, but we are. We are that's how we became friends. And we are still friends to, to this day. That's pretty cool. I mean, regardless of how I feel about Nicole on the TV, I, I love hearing about people's like genuine friendships that they have like off yeah. the show. I don't know. I always feel like that makes things more real. You know, oh, well, it yeah, helps you like people. Sorry. Oh, well, that's gonna, pretty cool. No, you're fine. I'm, I'm, I'm going to listen, but I'm going to do something in the same time frame that I'm listening, I promise. And then it's, <laughs> and then you guys are going to appreciate me more for this. <laughs> My question is, like, how was it being between, like, Laurel and Nicole? Because I know you're friends with both of them, and you're, like, in the middle. So how was it, like, having to deal with, like, both of them with, like, Laurel complaining about Nicole, Nicole complaining about Laurel. Like, how was that? Because every it time was the worst I... experience I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Uh, it, I can totally see absolutely... that though. That would be like being in hell. Your friends are like absolute worst experience. In one minute, you're beating each other up the next. Yeah, that's the biggest problem. And Car and I have spoken about this so many times. And like Brandon has texted me about it. And everyone's just like, bro, they didn't do you any justice on how much you had to like listen to and be in the middle of and Kara as well. They made it seem like they were, they hated each other. They slowly started to like each other. And then they really like each other. Like it was the progressional thing. It was nothing like that. It was, <laughs> it was Nicole crying on my shoulder at 10 AM 
Laurel crying on Cara's shoulder at 10 a.m. At 11 a.m., Cara and I were together, and I'm like, God, I'm like, yo, Laurel's so nasty to Nicole, and Cara's like, no, Nicole's so nasty to Laurel, and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm like, but Nicole said this, and she's like, well, Laurel said that, and I'm like, well, that don't make sense, and then we walk out, and Nicole and Laurel at 11 a.m. are making out in the closet, so you're like, wait, you're both crying to, our, to each other, to us, at 10 a.m., 11 a.m., you're making out in the closet, you know what I mean? Then it was like 2 p.m., she's like, I, I, I hate Laurel, I'm never talking to her again, Jay, get over here. And I'm like, oh my, what now? And then I would listen to it, deal with it, right? And calm her down. By 5 p.m., they were out sunbathing together, laying next to each other, like cuddling. And I'm like, what is happening? It was a mind fuck. It was, thing. it was an everyday thing. And it was like an hourly thing. Like Ryan says it at some point in, in the season, I remember, like that they actually air. But this was an everyday thing. It wasn't just a progressive, like gradual thing. It was an everyday thing. And then the whole like sleeping in a bed and then having Nicole and Laurel next to me making all sorts of weird noises every night. They <laughs> show me once in the beginning being like, are we really doing this again? Like, I'm not doing, get out. Like, I'm not doing this. There were so many nights in a row that it happened that I finally just broke and was like, get out. Like, I'm not doing this anymore. I need to sleep. I'm glad you two don't give a shit what happens tomorrow, but I do. Oh, oh no. Gosh, that would be frustrating. That's terrible. <laughs> Girl, it's the most to- it was the most toxic relationship I have ever seen in my life. Yeah. That's <laughs> I insane. would not be able to handle that as somebody's friend. I would be like, you know what, ma'am, you're gonna have to figure this out and and don't talk to me till it's over because I can't do this but, every and, day. But it's he's whiplash. friends with both of them. It's not like it's just one of them. He's getting don't talk to me. Uh, <laughs> believe me. Oh, oh man. God. Hey, you bad. said you so are you and Cara still friends? Like you guys talk or Car and I talk a couple times a week. I was gonna say every day, but it's not every day. Like we literally talk a couple times a week. Random, just random stuff, like actual stuff, like random memes or gifts or jokes or whatever. Like we walked around the house giving each other the finger all the time for no reason. Like that was always <laughs> like, oh, you want like you want your speaker? Eh. And she's like, ah, right, whatever. Like and we just did it for fun. Like it was fun, and so we just sent each other random middle fingers for no reason. Take pictures in weird spots. I was in Texas and I was next to a pirate ship, so. I sent her a picture next to the pirate ship and of told course. her that I'm a better pirate than her. But <laughs> yeah, we, we we do. We talk about random stuff. We talk about personal stuff. Like we are, we are very, we're good friends. I love That's that. Cool. Yeah, I would join. I would join the that girl. I I pray, pray that her and I get a chance to compete again together. That would be very Where cool. We? we would love to see it. You guys are good when yeah, you guys oh, are partners. Hell yeah! It's oh my god. It, there's she's she's a beast. Kara is a beast. She is a straight up player. She is not a conniver. Like people were always like, oh, you're so selfish holding on to your star. And I'm like, uh, isn't that how you're supposed to do it? Like you're supposed to hold on to your star to get to the final, right? So how do you call someone selfish? Every move she made was so strategic, never really went against Thank anybody. Say. Even the Cam thing, I'm like, for, I think Cam blew out of proportion to begin with. But you got to understand where Car is coming from. Like, Carr's main thing is to protect her star. That's what she's doing. And sh- and the vote already was going your way anyway, so it wasn't even like Cara had to literally go against her. She just had to not go with her for that vote. That was it. There's so, so much hypocrisy on this season. It drives me nuts. Oh, it's insane. When I voted, I voted for Leroy once. Leroy walked up to me beforehand and said, Jay, if, I, if you're outvoted, don't show your hand. Just go along with it. And I said, dude, you know I don't want to say your name. And he was like, if it's four against one, what are you going to do? He's like, protect yourself in that instance. And I was like, that's how the game is supposed to be. I respect it. I appreciate it. Because I would say the same thing. And I've told him, I said, if that's the case, I agree. It's a game. I get it. You protect me as much as you can mm-hmm. without throwing yourself under the chopping block. Right. That's why I've so always I liked down there, Leroy. Like, Leroy's amazing. He's the funniest guy I think I've ever met in my life. Everybody says that. That's every, every person we talk to, they're like, he's the funniest, hands down. He doesn't even try. He just speaks and you laugh. And I'm like, how do you come up with this? Like his tone of voice <laughs> makes you laugh. And you're like, you didn't even say anything. But you said nothing. And it was funny. He is one of my favorite male competitors of all time. I absolutely love Leroy. Oh, absolutely. Her dog I, is, named, I, her dog is I, named Leroy. Yeah, Your my dog dog's actually named Leroy. Leroy. Yeah, I have a dog named Leroy Brown. <laughs> That's love right there, man. That's love. <laughs> He's a cutie. He's an old man now. Um, 
I just need I just need some clarification. I don't know if you can provide it, but what is Flora's problem? Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Who's on this season? Yes. I mean, in the confessionals, she was. She actually has some amusing confessionals. I'll be honest. At first, she does. She, did. she does. She has some amusing confessionals. I agree with that. Uh, I'm not a Flora fan. I don't know. She, she. I want to say she's very sneaky, because like, she kind of would just listen, and then go right, like run right to the next room and be like, oh, "Jay said this. Jay said this. This one said that." There was an instance they just showed in the last episode. Where Kara was like, Kara and I were talking, and I was like, oh, I'm just going to steal Cam Star, like, and all that whole thing. And then um, Kara said something, like, was like, well, Nicole's, the, the decision Nicole made, like, like, you got to be an idiot to make that decision. Like, it's a stupid decision. Right. Like, the decision, the decision is idiotic. And I'm like, I agree. You know what I mean? Like, I literally put out there, Nicole, if we vote this way, you are safe. They show it in me saying it the whole time. Like, my main concern is right. you. We do it this way. Car is good. You're good. Problem solved. Now, she goes against me, puts Car against Cam, right? If Cam wins, what happens? You have to take Nicole's star. There's no other option. So it's like, you screwed yourself, you know? And it wasn't, it was a stupid decision. I literally planned it all out and said, let's do this. And everyone was on the same page. And then she goes against it. And then Car says it's stupid. And then, Four runs to Nicole and is like, Car's calling you an idiot, and Jay agreed. And I'm like, what are we, seven? Are we seven years old? <laughs> yes. Apparently some, some of them. them are. So then Nicole's yelling at me like, well, you let her talk to me like that. And I'm like, Nicole, she did not call you an idiot. She said the decision you made was idiotic. And I agree with her. It was idiotic. You're fucking stupid for that. I told you you're <laughs> stupid for that. Like, I told you to your face you're stupid for that. She Does said, well, Nicole you know, really... Does Nicole realize that now, like hindsight? I don't know. Um, Nicole's not around right now. Okay. Understood. So I, I don't know. I don't know if she's seen yeah. these last couple episodes or not. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, it was, was like in the moment, she... in the heat of the moment, she's like jumping down my throat now. You said this. Flora heard right. you say this. And I'm like, get Flora down here and let's have a conversation. And Flora's like, oh, I'm in the shower now. <laughs> that shower. Magically, the first time That's I want to take a shower funny. this season is when I need you to prove something. That's what I told. So Apparently, I'm not a big horror fan. She's still beefing with Tina. I yeah, we we saw all that all over Twitter, <laughs> right? <laughs> or yeah, Instagram, or me, wherever the hell they were fighting. Tell me at what point Flora did anything? Like I don't know. <laughs> I I don't want to. I'm trying not to be rude. I don't want to do that. Like. I get it. She didn't want, she didn't expect to go out there. She didn't want to go out there. She lasted forever, but she lasted forever. And meanwhile, you watch every challenge she's in last place every single time. So it's like, that's cool. If that's your thing, that's fine. But then don't go behind everyone's back talking smack about everybody when you couldn't hang, you know, like that's yeah. what I don't like. I, I've never gone behind anybody's back and said anything that I haven't said to their face. Like I just said with Nicole, same instance. So it's like, I don't know. I, I didn't appreciate it. She's still beefing with Tina. She's beefed with me. She had beef with Nicole at one point. She had beef with everyone at one point. It's like, that's just that's just her. But her confessionals are funny sometimes. <laughs> she's she's too old for this. But that's how I feel about some of the people from this season that have said some like Adam. And like it's unfortunate Adam. because like T and I have met Adam. We met him at a challenge mania, like, you know, before the season started airing. And he was like, you know, we were all drunk, but he was like cool and everything. And then like, we kind of, you know, we liked him. And then he starts saying shit that like is the opposite of what he was saying the week before. And then this week with yeah. this whole Steve's dead to me, I'm like, yeah. bro, you voted him in. <laughs> exactly. What, how can you, like, how does he have the, the mindset to talk that bad about Steve? When he voted Steve in twice, right? This is right. more than once. More than once. Like, what did you expect? And Steve literally played it out perfectly. And I mean, good for Ace, I guess, getting a star twice just handed to him. Amazing for him. <laughs> but like, yeah, I mean, Adam, he's like, well, Adam voted me in. Ryan didn't want to go in, so I don't have respect for him to give him a star. And then there's Ace, who has won more than one challenge and wasn't beefing 
we had our little core four click. We were good. So he's like, yeah, fine. I'm taking Adam Starr because the only one he could take. And I'm giving it to this guy. Like, he literally told you why he did it. And it was your fault, Adam. How can Adam come back and say you're dead to me? And he went aggressive, too. He went yeah, real he aggressive, did. real disrespectful. And it's like, for what? You would have done the same thing. You voted him in. You caused this. You could have said any other name, but you chose not to. And you volu- You said, because I know Steve won't take mine, therefore I'm going to vote him in in case he wins. Then he can take someone else's and give it to someone. Like, he had this whole plan, and it backfired, and then he wanted to throw a shit fit about it. It yeah. was bizarre. Very bizarre. Very bizarre. Sure it was. Yeah. It, you like, definitely called it, all, it, though. Watching it all go down and then have Steve win and then watching, like, the second half of it go down, I'm like, anything that Adam is saying was not warranted by how the first half of this episode went. Right. You know, Adam yeah. took it way too far. I think it was very disrespectful, very rude, and definitely over the top for sure. Well, I think I think a lot of the people that are on this season, and maybe I'm just making this up, thought they were going to come on and maybe get a good edit or come back and, you know, people are going to love them. And I feel like it was the opposite. You, people would make fun of you, and then you came back and you're like the hero. <laughs> you know, I was expecting the edit. I, I knew it was coming. Yeah. And then Adam, who everybody liked, and now he's just turned into a jackass who's bashing steve like come on i was a big adam fan until this last episode i thought he was joking i was like okay well so that's what i said i i kind of stopped like i was watching with someone and they were like wow what an asshole and i'm like no they're buddies like he's like it's cool and then he was just like you're dead to me sit on it and turn and i was just like oh he is serious like he's seriously mad (laughs) how is he this mad that's the name of the game and yeah, Steve seems know. like the sweetest person. I felt horrible for Steve. I didn't want to vote Steve in the second time that I had to, but I had no choice. And I went straight to Steve's face and I said, yo, I have no choice. I have to do this. Like, this is why. This is the plan. I felt horrible for him. And for Adam to say he had no friends, who were Adam's Lies. friends on that? Who were Adam's friends on that season? Right? He Avery. had Avery. He had Avery, who, which, by the way, they got into a huge blowout in the middle of the season. And I had to get in Adam's face to protect Avery. Let's not forget about that, since Adam wants to go turn things upside down. But Steve oh. was friends with myself, Ace, and Kara. That's why I said and we Nicole had Nicole at some four. point. And our core four was that. And then Nicole was my number one. And everyone knew that. And everyone mm-hmm. knew that that was mm-hmm. impressive. But we kept saying, like, we have our core four. And Nicole had a star. Kara had a star. Steve had a star. And Ace and I were, when we went to that last challenge, Ace and I were like, yo, it's, it's got, this is the last challenge. So it's one of us. One of us has to win. And then the other one has to help the other go against who they want. Whatever it is, one of us has to be part of it if we both can't be. Because our core four plus Nicole, we had it. Like, we had a group. We had a, a friend group. And you hear Ryan says it too. He's like, Jay, this is the first time that Jay has the numbers over me. Like, someone has more numbers than me. Because we knocked all of their people out. And we recruited Steve and became friends with him because he was good. He was cool. He didn't want any drama. He was trying to stay out of the drama. The poor kid was just on the bad end of everything yeah. every time. What? He went in and came back out every time, too. So That's true. Yeah, he did. We love Steve. <laughs> Steve had friends um, there. Just So if I needed to clip something, I believe that Steve had more friends there than Adam did at that point. So I don't know who Adam thinks he is to, to disrespect Steve that hard. Steve was my boy, Ace's boy, Cara's boy, and Nicole's. Like, I, I don't see how... Anything he said is validated. I agree. And we yeah. we love Steve. We think he is hysterical and quirky in all the best ways. We love his confessionals. Yeah. They didn't show a lot of Steve. They didn't show a lot of like the funny moments we had with Steve. Or like Kara brought it up in one of the episodes and she was like, Oh, it's Aces and Spaces and like Steve in the Wild. Steve in the Wild. You would just that was what it was. <laughs> Ace was just sleeping everywhere. And then Steve was just doing <laughs> weird stuff in weird places. He built a fort. He built a fort in the entire room. Like three beds together. Like three beds. When people were getting limited, he was dragging beds, like unscrewing beds from walls, dragging them into his room. He made like a castle and just stayed <laughs> under there, like doing his thing. And I'm like, what is happening? You go outside and he's like in a tree branch and he's talking to you and you're looking around and you're like, where are you? And then you look up and you're like, what are you, why? Why are you up there? Like, what are you doing? Like, and he would just come out with such funny stuff. It was great. 
Oh, I enjoyed Steve a lot. He was funny, very quirky, very, very like weird humor, but it was it was what you needed when you're out there. So it was it was entertaining. I love that. Um, so who came up with the comparison that you and Ryan are ocelots? Was it you? Was it Ryan? Was it someone yeah, it was else? Ryan. It, it was, was Ryan. Ryan. I don't know how the word ocelot came out. Neither of us ever heard it. I think someone in production like said the word or like we there was an animal out there and they're like, oh, it's probably an ocelot. We were like, the hell is an ocelot? And then it just <laughs> so happened that like we found out what it was. And I'm like, dude, that's me. Like I'm the underdog, right? I'm smaller than everybody here. But I would love to wrestle Brad in an elimination. I would love to do uh, like one of the the hands-on with Leroy. Like I like that. That's fun for me. I, I, I'm not afraid of, of physical stuff. And I'm so much stronger for my size than people think. So I love that. And then Ryan's like, yeah, dude, like I'm this small, like little guy and I like doing this stuff. Like, let's do it. And I'm like, this is awesome. Like, so we're ocelots basically. And like, we just started going back and forth with it. It was really funny to watch. And it went on for quite some time during that season. We would just be yelling at each other from like 60 feet away. Like, yo, ocelot, let's go. Like, just to keep yourselves entertained. I hope you know how to spell it now because it's going to be a trivia question on a future season. (laughs) No clue. No clue. O-C-E-L-O-T. Oh, I thought that was an S. I thought it was like O S D. Mm-mm. O C E and then Lot. L O T. I never said I was schmuck. O C E Lot. <laughs> there you go. So if you're ever on a future season and that's a trivia question, you got it. Oh, I would we die. actually we actually met Ryan too, and he's amazing. We love him. Oh, he's hilarious. Ryan was fun. He was funny. He was actually very injured the entire season. And they never yeah. showed any of that. So I'm sure he probably mentioned it to you. He did a hell of a job for being as he, injured as he was. He was going to tell our favorite story. <laughs> we say that again? He made me touch his shoulder. He was like, here, feel this. Like, Oh, yeah. 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 That's crazy. Like, they basically were like, oh, you pulled a muscle. Like, we'll give you PT and you'll be fine. Then eight weeks later, a different doctor was like, dude, you shattered this thing a month yeah. ago. It's in yeah. pieces. And we were like, wow. Okay. And he didn't quit. That's the crazy thing. Never gave up. Like, he never gave up. It definitely hindered him. And he yeah. wouldn't do certain things in the chat, like jumping off the thing. A lot of times he kind of, like, he would just be like, my shoulder. And, like, just jump. That way he could, like, take more of a break. Yeah. But, so it definitely hindered him for sure. I, I would love to see him at full capacity. He's a great dude, though. Ryan's a great dude. Yeah. Yes, he is. We love him. He's one of our favorites. Um, yeah. don't want to take up too super much more of your time. I know you are a busy man. So, um, we obviously know you are a firefighter, uh, in your real life. How long have you been doing that? Uh, seven years now. I've been a firefighter oh, for wow. seven years. Now. Yeah. Okay. I love it. Best, best decision I've ever made. Best job in the world. And it's like, it's, you, they always say the, the quote is like, you can't train harder. You can't train hard enough for a job that can kill you. And it's true. Like there's, you, just keep training and training and training and go as hard as you can. And it still may not help you one day. You know what I mean? But that's right. one of the big things that has gotten me into the physical shape that I'm in. And when I say I want to run a final and I will never lose in a final ever again in my entire life, mark my words on that. It's because of that. I train every day. I work out every day on my own time. I do my job and I train for my job and nobody trains harder than I do when it comes to that. So that's why I would say I'm ready. I, I wanted the final so bad, so bad. But I do love so the you, job. So but you would go back, though? You would be on again? I I would go back, yeah. Yes. It, 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 the thing is, it would have to line up with work. Like, I had to use – I had to finagle some things to be able to do this with work. So the timing would have to be right. But I would 100% do another All-Stars if everything lined up. Just – I I can win. I was when I tell you that there was nothing I thought that was going to stop me. Like I promise you, I, in my head, I was it was it was mine. I didn't care. I wanted the drinking challenge because I was not letting that stop me. And Cara's like, you need to crush that one. Like that's the one you need to win that challenge to prove to people. And I was ready. I was down. Like I had practiced. I had done shit. I, I was ready for anything. And I don't give up. I will never quit again. It will never happen. I am probably, I would say, one of the more well-rounded people that was on All Stars. So I I'm like, please, please bring me to, please bring on a final. I wanted like the mini final. They used to do mini finals in the middle of the season. Mm-hmm. Right. I was like, 
give me that because I am going to blow everyone out of the water and just laugh and be like, for all you who thought I couldn't <laughs> do this, here you go. Like, bring on the rest of the season. Let's do it. Oh, you would have killed it 100%. I was and I ready. Think, I, I'm ready. I think it helps now that you're also a little bit older. So, like, you're not, you're like more humble of a person. You're more mature. Oh, that's so sweet. It's the nice like thing anyone said to me on the podcast. <laughs> You're welcome. That's like probably like the tamest thing I've ever said on a podcast. Because <laughs> I mean, look, I'm gonna be real. I didn't love you when you were first on TV. I was like, this guy's kind of a dill hole. But you were also <laughs> like a young dude in your twenties. You know, guys in their twenties are assholes. Sorry, you know. And now you're a little bit older. You're more humble. You're, and you still kick ass because you never even came in last when you did X's two. It was X's two, right? Correct. Yes. And that's okay, also yeah. correct. You, you never came in last. You still didn't come in last. And I know if we see you again, you won't come in last then either. And hopefully exactly. you won't need a damn star to get to the final. If I didn't need a star, I was just saying this the other day, if I didn't need to force in myself into that elimination to get a star, I would have walked into the final. I would have competed in two finals without ever going into an elimination. That would have in itself been like Impressive. a cool record, a cool stat. You know what I mean? Like two full, yeah, seasons. Sure. So I did two full seasons without Ever going into elimination, except for, like, again, the, the last episode, because I had no choice. And in two seasons, I never once came in last. Again, other than when I was forced to, because the whole house ganged up on me, and I knocked myself out, because I was colorblind. Yeah. Which, I mean, is very impressive, because, like, very few people can do that. I appreciate Even that. Even champs. I, I appreciate that. And I, I thought I was going to win. I, I swear to you on everything I love, it was in my head. I was never going to lose. Like, I wasn't. I, every day, I knew I wasn't going home. There was no doubt. So when this happened, I was broken for a minute. Like, because I was just set. Mm. It was set. Like, if there's ever something where you're like, oh, no, I know this answer 100%. And then they're like, eh, and you're like, how? That's impossible. There's no way. Like, that's how I felt. I was not ready to go home. I was not. In my head, I was going to that final. And I knew as hard as I competed to get to that final, I was going to compete even harder to win that final. It was mine. I was counting that money. That money was half spent already. It was mine. So that was a, that was a heartbreaking moment for me to walk in there. The the heart, the first heartbreaking moment was to walk in and see the water tank and the colored puzzle. And I was like, <laughs> Oh my God. Like this is the first time I felt like, Oh my God, this, I, I don't know if this is going to work out for me. Everything else. I was like, I'll find a way I could finagle it. Like, I'll make it work. This was the one time where I looked at it and I said, I don't know if this is going to go well for me. And then to have to say goodbye was just heartbreaking because I wasn't ready. I, I wanted that moment. I wanted There's that win. Imagine imagine if I did all this, right? Everyone, I have been getting a lot of love from everybody and I'm so grateful for it. I'm not used to it. I am. I appreciate it so much. All the comments on Instagram and Facebook, it's amazing. I, I'm, I feel honored to get all of that. Imagine if I would have won the whole thing. You want to talk about a redemption? Oh, yeah. That would have been a redemption yeah. season. That would have been a hell of a redemption. Oh, my God, I know. And, yes, I get it. When I was 20 years old, I was a jerk. I understand that. <laughs> I wasn't great on X2 either, like, as far as my <laughs> the way I spoke and the way I, I handled myself. What was an awkward-ass season. Up, I think I've grown up. I've, I've learned. And I was raised the right way. So you add all of it together, and I think that's where I've turned out now. And I think I'm okay where I'm at. And you know what? You didn't win this season because you're just meant to win one where the prize pot is even bigger. Exactly. Uh, I want it. I'm telling you, I need this. I need it. I need. I feel like at this point, I I need another opportunity. Because when I got the call to do All Stars 4, I wasn't sure I even wanted to do it. I didn't think I was ever mm -hmm. going to get a call again. And then to get one, I was like, I don't even know if I want to do it. Put myself through the, the, the scrutiny that I've been getting for the last eight years. Like, right. let's refresh everyone's memory on how bad of a human I am, apparently. And then redo it. I'm like, do I really want to do that? But then I thought about it and realized what I am capable of and what everyone needs to really see. And that's that's how this turned out. And I'm, I hope it continues that way. I hope I can get another chance and things work out and I can run another one. Well, you have Agreed. a very huge fan base now. So that's I never thought I'd hear that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's weird. The world it's, of the challenge. Weird. It's weird. It's weird, but it's it's nice in the same breath. It's nice to finally get those those good comments coming in. You know, I'm tired of having to block people. I don't think I have any more space in my block list. <laughs> we know what that's like. Yeah, of course.
<laughs> Tia, do you want to give uh, your random fun questions? Yes. Um, okay. So what is a job you would be terrible at? Oh my God. Wow. You should have like prepped <laughs> me on these questions. Everything. I mean, what job am I, what job could I be good at is the real question. Um, I hope you're good at being a fireman. <laughs> I'm very good at that job. That's what I'm saying. I don't think I could do anything else. I've been, I've been gardening out there for a week and a half and I'm like, I want to cut my hands off. I will never garden again. I don't know how anyone does that for a living. Let's start off with that. The other thing is I could definitely never do what you guys do and be on the other end of this podcast because I talk too damn much. So, <laughs> but we love it. That we yeah, it's fun. We enjoy people coming on and, you know, just shooting shit with us. So. Yeah. Cause some people it's like, you gotta like pull the stuff out yeah. of them to say we oh, love just, you just yell at me when i when i talk i talk a lot so just yell at me when you need me to stop that's how that goes well the three of us are friends too so it's just like you know we're just chatting so yeah. sometimes, sometimes when we're doing recaps i'll even like drink wine and get drunk and <laughs> uh, recap, you're talking my language <laughs> yeah we get our side okay. tangents we get get our wine but anyway, know, go ahead. Keep it. all right do you follow the five second rule as in, like, when you drop something on the floor and you eat it? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I was born in 1987. Who doesn't follow that rule? <laughs> same. I don't do anything that touches the floor. I didn't know Wait, we were what? the same I age. I almost won't eat anything if I dropped it, like, even on the counter. I'm so, I'm a germ. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I don't care. Like, if something fell in my food, I would just, like, push that corner off the plate and eat the rest of it. I don't care. He's from the Bronx, okay? I'm sure. I'm sure. Bad. Anything I that you guys are like, oh, would you do? I've done worse already, so. <laughs> that is true. That's one point. But yeah, hundred like... percent, I follow the five second rule. Not for nothing, but I'm pretty sure that's how I like was raised. Like my parents were like, <laughs> no, you pick that up and you eat that. All right, that's that's all Don't we got. Don't waste left. it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't waste yeah, our hard earned money. Hundred percent, I follow that rule for sure. Well, but then wait, I have a question. Up. What about you three? What about you three? Do you follow? I it? have. I and, do not. Uh, it now it depends on where I am. That's agreed. True. Okay, I agree with that. I agree with that. But agreed, one hundred percent. But yeah. yes, for the now, most part, I follow it. If I'm at home, I'll follow it. But usually, my dogs get to whatever I drop first. Well, that's a yeah. different story. <laughs> they're <laughs> they're right there. Well, that's actually the same for me. My dogs, yeah, they're right there in case I drop something. But no, if they didn't eat it, I would not eat it. Well, it's, it's three <laughs> against one here. Sorry, too. <laughs> no. That's okay. It's okay. She's from Florida. We'll forgive her. <laughs> oh, my God. I Florida. The weirdest things happen in Florida. That's the state. I love it. <laughs> she loves it down there. It's too hot I for love, me. I'll I love stay. the weather. We love the beaches. We love it. Now it's too cold, so. Okay. Have you ever stolen anything? You try to get me arrested on the damn <laughs> I stole a lipstick when I was 13. It scared the shit out of me, but I admit it. <laughs> hey, you know, sometimes like you pick something up at Home Depot and you ring up a whole bunch of stuff and you're still holding the one thing and you walk out and you're just like, ah, oh, crap. Oh well. Yeah. Whoops. I put a. I've done hey, that. I put a uh, a tank. I, not. I don't. I'm not a big Target fan because of like a lot of things that they do, but I won't get into that kind of stuff. But I don't shop there often. I went there once. I put a tank top over my shoulder. And then I had a whole bunch of stuff in my hands and I rang everything up and then I walked to my car, put everything in my car, opened my door, sat down. And when I went to get my seatbelt, I went like this and I grabbed the shirt and I was like, oh, shit. Like I made it all the way to my car without even realizing that it was still on my shoulder. So technically I stole that thing. But damn, now, I'm, now I got to go back and pay for it because you're going to get me in trouble. You, you no, could have just said I... you, you stole some heart. He could have said that. <laughs> Yeah, look, I have watched people <laughs> walk out with carts full of shit at Target, and nobody even. They are way worse than me. That is true. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I would, my luck, I'd forget to pay for like a deodorant, and I would get fucking tackled or something. That would be my luck. Yeah, that's that, what exactly. terrified me. That's what I said when I was 13. I stole a tube of lipstick, and I was so mortified, <laughs> and I just would never steal anything ever again. I was yeah, so I worried. About I agree. I don't think I was ever like. Oh, let me just hold. No one's looking. Like, uh, like I've never <laughs> yeah. been that guy. You know what I mean? It's not worth stuffing your other. pants. 
I mean, yeah, I'm gonna lose my job over a nine dollar tank top. Like it was well, not. No. I'm not intentionally loading stuff up and looting every store. <laughs> right. All right, we have one last question. Um, our friend Frankie, who is normally on here with us, but he um, is taking a break. He always loves to ask this question, so we always ask it in honor of him. Um, okay. How do you do? You think you would survive a zombie apocalypse? Oh hell yeah! Me too. I would, that would that would be fun. Yeah, <laughs> I would. I really think I would. I'm smart enough. I got this. I got. I'm some teaming up with you guys. Yeah, because I don't yeah. think I would. <laughs> I don't even know how to shoot a gun, so I'm fucked. <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna have no choice but to learn, girl. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's like it's like yeah. a big game of laser tag. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Look, just give me the spike That's baseball true. bats. I'll just I'll just hit them in the heads. <laughs> You watched right? Walking I mean, Dead. Have you not learned anything from that, Caitlin? Right. Did that. I just watched the Twisted Metal show, which is amazing and kind of similar. Yes. Oh, so good. So yeah. good. Going to the day, like, all of those shows, you learn some stuff. It'd be, it'd be entertaining for a little while. I wouldn't want to do it forever. You know, if it was like a week-long thing, I'd be like, all right, it's cool. We go back to normal now, but. <laughs> Did you know so, that yeah. in some cities, they survive. have, like, I think it was, like, in Atlanta or something, they do, like, a a zombie like parade and these people dress up like zombies and act like a zombie for it and walk down the street oh my god okay. so <laughs> could you, you know, imagine they know i'm a huge horror movie fan like huge and i volunteer at horror conventions and they have a zombie walk every year it's really cool i don't participate because it's too hot to put on all that makeup and walk down the street but yeah i'm a, I'm a big big horror guy halloween is my favorite holiday i love yeah horror. Like I'm big on that as well, hundred percent. Same. Love it. We love horror here. I mean, Tia's a horror fan. I do ghost hunting. Like nothing scares us. Oh damn! Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I, do, I, I love like that stuff too. Though I do like that stuff as well. Oh, do you? Do you like paranormal <laughs> stuff, like ghost stuff? Yeah. Oh yeah. Had tons of stuff. Oh, I have to show you this video. Okay, so real <laughs> quick. Um, so I live in Maryland, and. I'm part of a ghost hunting group and um, we oh, worked a convention and uh, it was at Pennhurst Asylum, which is in Pennsylvania. And it's like pretty notoriously haunted. And um, we got to walk through one of the buildings and like the buildings have not been touched. Like that shit is like what it's been for 60 years, decrepit, all this stuff. And I was like, okay, I'm going to record a video because somebody on our team walked through there, took a picture. And in the picture, you can clearly see this figure in the bottom corner walking past that is not a person oh wow! not a person like you or me so i was like i'm gonna take video and i almost never take video so i'm taking video as i'm walking through this place and i like start shooting down this one hallway that you can't walk down i'm like there's definitely something moving back there because i can see it on the camera so later on i go to look at it the entire five minute video recorded itself upside down which i cannot do on my phone Without holding the phone upside down, which I did not do because I was taking pictures as I was recording, and all the pictures are right wow. side up. That's the five wild. minute video is upside down, and then you can see in the video the part where I'm like, "There's something moving back there," and you can see that shit moving across the screen. Wow, that's crazy! So fucking cool. I love it. <laughs> wow, yeah, that's weird. That is weird. I like yeah. stuff like that, though. It's entertaining to me. Yes. So, um, <laughs> any other questions, guys? No, we're good. Okay. Well, Jay, thank you so much for finding time to talk with us. Uh, we know you are a very busy man. Do you want to tell people what your social media handles are? So if they want to follow you, they can. Um, yeah. So I have, I have the same social media as for everything. It's JGMTV, J-A-Y-G MTV, Instagram, Twitter, all of that nonsense. So it's nice to finally get those wonderful comments from everyone you know just keep them coming i like it thank you guys appreciate it um <laughs> side note even one of your biggest detractors jemmy has been giving you your flowers in her podcast she still calls you jg mtv that's how she refers to you but yeah, even yeah, she's I, I given you props. i don't i can't even believe that <laughs> i promise so, i've heard it here i listen i have nothing against jemmy all right. I don't care. She's holding on. To, she's holding on to stuff from eight years ago. I don't even know what it is anymore. Like, I, I don't say anything bad about her until she just keeps clapping at me on Twitter all the time. And I'm like, why? What are you doing? Like, there's no beef. Just leave it alone. I don't care. I really don't care. So, again, I don't care. 
<laughs> and that is the final word from Jay. Well, thank you again, Jay. Um, we'll get this out in a few days. We will post it on Instagram and Facebook and we'll tag you in it, share it and all that good stuff. And thank you again for finding time to talk with us. Thank you so no, much absolutely. for talking to us. Yeah. I appreciate you guys. Again, I'm sorry it took so long. And again, I also telling you, I don't like to do these. I <laughs> think I've done like three, maybe four. That's it. And I've been asked to do like 20. I have... <laughs> I have too much stuff going on, but you guys have always been nice to me. You've always been good to me. Even when someone didn't like me and called me a dill hole, still didn't talk too bad about me. So I appreciate Damn it. it. I, appreciate, I appreciate the support from you guys. Okay. It means a lot to me to get the support from you guys. I do appreciate it. Absolutely. You're welcome. And um, we will talk to you in the group. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I look forward to it guys. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.